So we have created our finished spot illustration. We even have offsets built in. So on darker colors, it has a slight um, border around it. I just tighten that offset up a little bit. And I have a mix of just a straight color overlay that's enlarged. You can see that here. And a slight drop shadow that's a little bit softer. So it gives kind of a cutout sticker effect, which helps it work on the different colors, helps show off your line work. And our last step is, of course, turn off all of them so it's just a free floating PNG. And then you save it as a PNG, you can upload it. But now, what if we want? to really control how it prints, because right now it's every pixel is very particular. And when it actually prints, printers do something very specific, no matter what the image is, no matter how it's colored. And that is what's called color separations. So it takes whatever your image is, and this is an extreme close-up, but it prints it with basically four inks on white paper. And those inks are cyan, which if we really zoom in here, you can see, which is the light bluish, magenta, which is this kind of hot pinkish, yellow, which is the yellow, and black. But those inks are not 100% opaque. So when they overlap with each other, for instance, when the cyan and the magenta overlap, you get this deep blue. And when the magenta and the yellow overlap, you get this 100% red. And then black, of course, just darkens everything. And from a distance, you start to see an image appear. So if that's how images are actually printed, we want to maybe use that to our advantage when doing digital design. Whether it's a photograph, and here we have digital separations instead of print separations. So you see of Jessica Elba here, the digital halftones of cyan, magenta, yellow, and black to give you the image. Now, what we're most used to seeing is with photographs. Anything printed in a textbook or anything digitally printed, we think that it's printed with millions of colors, but it's not. It's just printed with those four colors. But they're printed with tiny dots that are offset from each other into what are called Gaussian roses. So the eye here looks like this when you look at it up close. Take a magnifying glass to anything printed, and you'll see those dots and those Gaussian roses. That's why our prints are never quite as saturated. But designers more and more like to reference what's called halftone printing, this kind of dot pattern, to make stuff look vintage. Or to play it across you know, more high resolution printing as just a, a new design element. And I'll do it on my own work to add kind of emphasis to colors and to break up flat colors into more dynamic. These are just little details. So here's one of my spot illustrations, which really uses the CMYK separations on top of a digital design and offsets them to give it a little bit more oomph. Or here, my design of Texas as steak, one of my sticker designs and offsets them to look like it's kind of in 3D, but you can see all the color separations. Or here, California as fruits and vegetables. Or my character, Monkey Boy. So on and so on. So how can we use offsets in an interesting way? Well, first we have to understand how to do them digitally. And that process is easy to understand. It's a very technical process. But I have put them all into this action for you because it's labor intensive. There are shortcut ways, but this is the real way to do it. So if you do the CMYK full run, it automatically goes through all the steps. And so if I press play, remember my actions only work when you only have one thing open in Photoshop. And in order for it to work fully, 
I'm going to make a flattened layer at the top by holding down uh, Option while I click on Merge Visible with the backgrounds turned off because I don't want the backgrounds to be in this color separation. I'm going to turn off every other layer. And now I will run that action on that top layer, that top combined layer. And I'm going to let it rasterize my vector line work and I'm going to let it merge because this is just a coloring solution that then we can put up on top. And what you'll see is it's creating separate files for each color, a cyan dot layer, a yellow dot layer, a magenta dot layer, and a black dot layer. And then it's going to combine them all together into one file with a white background that can be turned on and off. So here are my color choices, even the line work, which is a brown line work, separated into halftone dots and overlaid on top of each other. And so you see the skin tone, which looks so flat, in my illustration is actually made up of all th three colors together. And the Ritz crackers have blue in them and those are the, the CMYK separations. Now how can I use those? Well each of them is, are individual. So this is what just the black and white separations look like. This is what black with yellow looks like. This is what magenta with yellow and black looks like. And this is all four. I can select all of those. I can put them in different, in different um, order. Though I like to have cyan on the bottom usually because I like it to be fairly warm. I can play with their different opacities. And I can select all those layers, swoop this combined one out, and I can move those up on top of my original. And because this is set for 300 pixels per inch instead of 350, I have to enlarge it slightly and line it up. Just a little bit more. And they're already offset from each other to give that kind of old printing look. Okay, now I have all those layers. Oh, the eyes don't quite match up. Let me, well, they're still all individual layers. Let me tighten it up a little. There we go. Maybe tighten it up a little bit over here. And these, are, these are all other options that I'll use to make my spot illustrations more unique. And this is kind of in, in building a personal style. Okay, so right now, all these layers are individual and are floating on top of my, my perfectly rasterized and flattened digital color. So if I just have cyan turned on, it does that, magenta that, and so on. I can move them underneath my line work if I want to, or I can just merge them all together as I often do, and then play with their opacity or play with their blending mode. So maybe I want it to be a very subtle effect, or maybe I want it to darken everything. Right. Or I can even let it be a screen and lighten everything. Or an overlay. I often do a pin light. And that's kind of a nice in-between. So that's without anything, and that's with some of this half toning put in. It just breaks it up, and I like it. Kind of feels more like a vintage shirt to me. So how does that process work? Well, it's a little complicated, so let's, let's break it down. So I'm going to do it to the lemon. Well, no, I won't do it to the lemon because there's not much color there. Instead, I'll show you, instead of using the action, how you could do it by hand. But first, I'm going to save it like this. 
and now I'm going to get rid of every layer except for that that combined PNG layer oh I have to unlock these sadly. and sometimes you get hired as a, a digital artist and you have to provide your own color separations I did a lot of t-shirt design when I was first doing uh, a lot of freelance illustration and for all of those I had to provide my own spot illustration or my own color separations which was a very good learning tool but it's a lot of work so this is what you do I have my one flat layer with no background the first thing you do is you convert your image to channels First, let me save this as something else. Call it a color test. By looking at your channels, I'm in RGB mode, and I can see the, the color lights that the computer is using to make up the full image. And it's red lights, which if I turn off everything except red, that's where the red lights are turned on and off. Green lights, that's where the green lights are turned on and off. Green with red give you all the yellows. And then blue lights, this is where the blue lights are turned on and off. With green, it gives you all the cyans. And with red, it gives you full spectrum. Okay, so what we need to do is go to image mode and change it to CMYK mode so that our channels are based on the inks. So this is what the black inks are doing. This is what the yellow inks with the black inks are doing. This is what the magenta with the yellow are doing. And this is what the cyan with the magenta, with the yellow, and with the black, what they're doing. Now, in order to isolate each color, I have to turn off all the channels except for that one. And it automatically makes it black and white. So I'll start with cyan. And I'll say image mode grayscale flatten layers yes and that leaves me only with the cyan discard other channels yes and then I go to image mode bitmap bitmap will only see black or white and I'll just match 350 pixels per inch I'm going to use a half tone screen there's lots of other patterns you can use to break it up and then you want the frequency. If I want the dots to really show up, I'll use a low frequency, like 20. And then this is cyan, and the angle for cyan is 105. And we're going to learn what these print angles mean in a little bit. And then the shape, I actually want to use a round shape. So I say OK. Now, it gives me those dots as a round shape at that resolution, but it's not cyan ink yet. So what do I need to do? I have to select all the black. And to do that, I have to go back to image mode. And I have to convert the bitmap to a grayscale at a 1 to 1 ratio so it doesn't change anything. And then I have to change that mode back to an, R an RGB color mode. And then I'm able to select all the whites, all the blacks. So let me select all the whites. Then select inverse. It will do a perfect selection because there's only black and white in bitmap. You know, there's no grayscale at all. And then I can duplicate that inverted selection so I just have free floating black dots. And then I select around those free floating black dots and I select the inverse. And then I'm going to fill them <laughs> with a color. And that color is going to be cyan. At 100%. And that's how I get my cyan dot layer. Now I just do that for every other color as an individual file. So I save that individually as a cyan file. And then I can layer each individual layer up on top of, on top of itself. So you can